Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am reconvening to open session, the regular meeting of the Fairview District 72 Board of Education. It is August 21st, 2024. It is 7.02 p.m. We have established that we already have a quorum. I'd like to request that all members of the public be respectful of everyone at this meeting. Ensure that you have silenced your cell phones and please join us as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to start with approval of minutes of the regular and closed session meeting um, of June 11th, 2024. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Anybody have any comments or corrections? You want to go through? Okay. Well, all those in favor of approving the minutes of June 11th, 2024, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Nope. Okay. Minutes are approved. Next item is approval of payments of bills. May I have a motion and a second to approve the payment of bills in the amount of $640,006.90. So moved. I'll second. Any questions regarding the bills? All right, uh, board secretary, can we please call the call, uh, roll call vote? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Rafael Cavour? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde, yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. All right. Bills are approved. All right. Next item up is the Parent Teacher Association Report. We have Sylvia. Oh, thanks. That's okay. Good evening. On behalf of Katie and I, we are excited to be back serving as co presidents again this year. Uh, we felt like summer flew by, but we were ready to go back to school. Our kids, not so much, but we were ready for them to go back in. Um, we're excited for the upcoming school year and all the fun PTA events we have planned. We are kicking off with our annual 5K, which takes place on October the 5th at 10 a.m. here at Fairview on our new track. Membership is officially open. Please check the digital backpack for a link to join the PTA. Our first general PTA meeting is September the 10th at 7 p.m. At the, in the nest. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item up is school activity report. Does anyone from the board or administration have any good news they'd like to share for the district? Sure, we have uh, some good news. Obviously, yesterday and today, seeing all of our kids was amazing. Uh, definitely uplifting, I think, for everyone just to get uh, the year going. And now we're in, it's somewhat in full swing. But uh, just over the summer, because we haven't had a chance to uh, see everyone, um, I just want to give a shout out to our staff that run our summer, our Fairview Summer Sports Camp. Uh, it's really great to continue to be able to do it, especially with all of our coaches. And then over the years, it's really grown to have a lot of former alumni that come back and they kind of serve as semi-counselors just to, to hang out with the coaches and the kids and, and share their knowledge about whatever sport that they're helping with. So that was great. Uh, and then last week we welcomed many, many new staff members at our new staff orientation, which uh, I think in all the years I've been here in 16 years is probably one of the largest groups, which was really cool because uh, it's a whole new group that is ready to start their legacy here at Fairview, uh, kind of get their, their footprint here. Um, and it was really neat just to hear about their experiences and what they're excited for uh, in this upcoming school year. And to see them now with kids is even more cool. So uh, that's my good news. So. Hello, this is, I'm Karen Shaboka, the new K-4 pri primary principal. And our good news is that we had a very successful getting ready program a couple weeks before school started. It was wonderful to see our kindergartner through, kindergarten through sixth grade students come into the building, just start to get reacclimated to school. For me, it was wonderful to start to get to meet some students and just start to put some faces with some names. So that was really great. We also had a very successful, albeit, the weather was not great, but a popsicles with the principal's event and uh, just a new family um, orientation. It was really nice to see so many families come in, which was really, really great. 
And I just want to say, um, as someone being new in this building and not necessarily in the community, I live in Skokie, but to be here and to be just to feel so welcome, um, I know that the new staff feel that way. I know the new students feel that way. And even today, I was walking down the hall and I saw there was a seventh grader before lunch and he was having trouble. Like he was peeking like around the corner. And I said, do you need help? And then I went over and helped him and, and he kind of looked at me and I was like, do you know who I am? And, and I said, I'm the new principal. He's like, oh, you're the new principal. He's like, welcome. He was so polite and kind. And I have felt that over and over from our kids. And it's just a testament to like, this community and how it takes a village to raise a child. And so I have been feeling that just in every way from students, from parents, from staff. So that is amazing news. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So today was our first day of preschool. Um, our preschoolers came today for the first time. Yesterday they were able to come for just a quick meet and greet with their families um, and see the classroom, but today they came on their own. Um, it was really great. We had some tears from both the parents and the children, but they soon turned into smiles and they had a blast and it was, we had a lot of extra people helping today just to get you know into the routine of the first day, but it was really, really great to see these new little falcons into our building. It was great. Thank you, and it was that time of the year again, we had our annual financial audit, and happy to report that it was all good. Um, something we take great pride in is the organization, our, especially with Jude in our business office, in the file, file or the record keeping, the files being in hand, everything being easy to find and cooperating with our auditors. So we'll have the audit report coming up in October that we're required to do by law every year. But again, it's something good to hear when we know that we're keeping, uh, we're being good custodians of the public funds. Barry. <laughs> I'm going to give good news for Barry. Barry has honestly been phenomenal in making sure all of our devices and just the behind the scenes things um, are in place. And he's been working really hard. So good news. I guess he deserves a compliment, but thank you, Barry. <laughs> and then I'll just echo um, that. A lot of the community was very excited about the popsicles and the principal meet and greet, and it was a nice introduction uh, to you, Karen, and then the staff, the, the teachers that were here. It was really nice um, for the students to either meet or see again, um, so that was really nice. And then um, just a huge kudos to you, Carly. Um, I was able to tour the preschool classrooms. Um, I know that you put a ton of work into it. I know a couple of the families that are have their kids in the preschool and actually came up to me at the gym today while I was like sweating on the treadmill and said like how great it's been so far and it's only day two. So just huge kudos to you because um, people stopped me to actually tell me how great it's been. Um, so I just wanted to, to give you that call out because I think it's important. I know you, you put in a lot of work, so thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Um, we will move on to board discussion items and would the superintendent please introduce the reports? Absolutely. Um, as you know as a board and I hope many of you in the community know this as well, uh, we are just uh, have wrapped up a multi-year strate strategic plan. Uh, we extended the plan by a year because of COVID um, and that really had, had derailed us on some of our work. Um, but at this point in time, the plan has come to a completion and it's time to think about the next plan. Um, so this evening I've invited Dr. Zabilka to come forth to present a proposal um, for a strategic plan. Um, and he will tell you all about the plan uh, that we're proposing and the people involved and what the process looks like. So welcome, Dr. Zavilka. Um, I had the, the, um, the good luck of becoming a superintendent uh, here at Fairview when Dr. Zabilka was a superintendent at Parkview in Morton Grove. Um, and he is one of several people who were amazing mentors to me uh, I don't know what I would have done in those first couple of years without some veteran colleagues to lean in on with all of my crazy questions. Um, but you know, my my success I really attribute to all of the people along the way who supported me, and and Gary was one of them. So he's retired and moved on to the next phase of life. And so welcome this evening, and looking forward to 
having this conversation. Very good. Well, thank you, Dr. Whitaker. And truth be known, Dr. Whitaker, can everyone hear me, by the way? If I still have my superintendent's voice so I can project a little bit. Um, Dr. Whitaker was a very gifted superintendent, and we were fortunate to have her in the township, as you still are. It's hard to believe. I, I don't want to give the number of the number of years that I've been retired already, but the fact that we even had the pleasure of working together for several years is great. I just want to say what a nice environment to come into this evening. As I came into Fairview, first of all, it looked significantly different than the last time I was here, something you could be exceptionally proud of. I had the pleasure of meeting George the architect and knowing that you know his thumbprint has been on this. You know what what a nice nice piece. But then the other piece is um, I met Casio again. He was one of my parents. His student went through my school, and he said, "Dr. Zabilka, how are you?" So I mean, you're just a very welcoming, inviting district. You've always been that way. That's the reputation that Fairview has always had. And just seeing all of you gather before the meeting, I know it's kind of hard to say. Let's get going with the meeting, but again, that's just the kind of culture that one, you know, especially someone like myself, loves to work with a district that has that kind of culture. This evening, I'm just going to walk you through an overview. As I go through various slides, if you don't mind, uh, feel free to ask questions along the way. Just stop me if you have any questions, but otherwise, I'm just going to go and move forward, and Barry's got me are you ready to go here? And, and just so you know, the board members um, have it up on their screens, so they may be looking at their screens, but that's because sure. the PowerPoint Absolutely. is here for them. This is more for the audience, so. Awesome. Well, very good. So that all said, we are a firm, Educational Leadership Solutions. We've been in existence for just over four years at this point. Um, we basically are a firm that specializes in doing strategic plans with districts, as well as we do administrative searches, uh, we do data analysis for districts, and then finally uh, leadership coaching and mentoring. So we actually kind of have a full range of services. Tonight we're primarily speaking about the strategic planning pieces. Uh, I've got two other partners, uh, Rich Volts and Don White are both also retired superintendents. And then we've got a number of associates, so we're a firm that is growing. The people that we have, if you're looking at their backgrounds at all, we've got a couple of them that it says now ISBE. That's the State Board of Education. They stole them from us. <laughs> uh, these were people that were working with us, and I say that in a very complimentary people. We say this to say that we work with quality people. We only will hire people with exceptional backgrounds and uh, experiences, and with that, um, this proposal that I'm doing tonight actually would be for me working with your district. But at the same time, just want to share with you that I'm not a lone ranger. We've got a number of other people that work with us as well. This is a slide that many of you, many of you as board members may have seen before. This is actually directly from the Illinois Association of School Boards. This is what they consider to be a good governance model, and it's one where you've got a district with the foundation being your district's mission and vision and values and beliefs. And those are the three major components of a strategic plan, which you already have in place. As Dr. Whitaker said, it's been there for some time, and as such, um, you know, what we will propose is revisiting those to see if they still fit who Fairview is today and who you'd like to be at some point in the future. From those emanate your district goals and then your superintendent goals and so on. You see the stair-step model as they show it. We like to promote strategic planning as a district-wide and even a community-wide type of process uh, that becomes everyone's responsibility. This isn't something that's, uh, that the district embraces specifically for the administration. This is for the entire district and community to be a part of, and I'll describe to you how we go about doing that. But this is the model. You have that alignment, which your best districts work well as well as your best organizations work well when you have that kind of alignment within your system. This is the flow chart of this, and if I were to go through this lock step through every piece, I'd lose the audience in about two minutes. Uh, so we're going to dispense with this slide. I've got it broken down where I'll just break down those components relatively quickly. Uh, we believe that strategic planning should be a community-wide process whereby we would involve other key stakeholders. And in so doing, we 
look and ask for board members to be a part of that group. That's up to you as to how many of you choose to participate. One of the things that we promote, though, is that our process typically involves three to four three-hour evening sessions. And one of the things that we ask in committing to this process is that any person from any of these groups who wants to be involved in this process commit to being there for every session unless an absolute emergency comes up. Because it's important for the continuity of the process to have the same 30 to 40 people, and that's, again, just uh, kind of a thumbnail number to work with. But um, we can go a little bit larger than that if you wanted to, or even a little bit smaller if you wanted to. But by and large, if we're looking for representation, we're looking for people who can commit to three or four three-hour evening sessions, primarily. So we're looking at board members, administrators, staff members. We're looking for parents. We're looking at students. We think students, uh, we've been doing that more and more, and we find that they have a lot to contribute to the process. Uh, so we like to have some student voice as a part of this process. And then some compute, uh, community members. So overall, anywhere from 30 to 40, if we got up to you know 45 or so, that would be okay. As I'm looking at your space, not being, you know, I don't want to be too presumptuous, but this would be an awesome space to do a process like this, you know, as well. But nonetheless, we'd be looking at engaging that many people. Now, you may be wondering if we're only engaging 30 to 40 people, how do we involve the rest of the community? Well, we actually begin the process by surveying your community as well. And this is a district-wide survey where we would give the, um, the district a link and a QR code to make as widely available to anyone in their district to be able to take this survey. And what the survey then basically asks is, in general, questions like, how do you feel about the academic performance of the students in this district? How do you feel about our facilities? How do you feel about uh, the way our district is run financially? We've got about 20 questions or so that pinpoint some of the major areas that the district would be interested in getting some data and feedback on so that it gives us those points for conversation as a part of the process. So that way we can engage as many people as possible. We even leave a couple of open-ended questions as a part of the survey so that if we didn't address something that somebody wants to, they can go ahead and write that in as well. We collect all the data, we disseminate it then to our, um, and share it with the committee for data to work with as a part of that process, okay? So your district already has a mission and a vision, and I put that there, you should be very familiar with what these are, they've been in place for the last, you know, five plus years. And the thing that we would start out, and I'm not going to spend the time now because we're not engaging in the process per se, but we would ask if this mission still meets what the mission of Fairview District should be. And we talked a little bit about part of my role as facilitator is to explain to the entire group what a mission is. Ideally, by today's standards, what's a quality mission statement look like? What should it include? Uh, what should it involve? Those kinds of things. And then we ask people to evaluate your current mission statement as well as your vision to see if those are still pertinent today. And what I find very often, uh, sometimes I have previous conversations with the superintendents of these districts and they tell me, well, I think you'll find most people here will like the mission statement and the vision statement. And then I go before the entire group and they say, we don't really like our mission statement or our mission statement, but that's different in every place. So we would have to evaluate that but that becomes part of the process. So I just want to say, we don't throw um, the baby out with the bathwater. We keep what you have in place, and we start from there and review those aspects um, before moving forward. So as you can see in this slide, then we review and then potentially recreate the district's mission, vision, the core values, and the goals for the district. This is all part of our process. We also then ask how the district is performing, and again, we get some of that data from the survey, but then we also may ask for some other data regarding your achievement, uh, how your financials are looking, facilities, technology, communications, and HR, okay, just to get information to see where we are. We perform a SWOT analysis. SWOT is an acronym that stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats, and we evaluate the input that we have gotten on all of those different areas to see 
what really stands out is things that maybe need to be focused upon and those which may not need to be uh, you know, focused on either. We then look at developing uh, broad-based goals for each of those major areas that we uh, determine. And then from there, we look to make sure, just as we talked about alignment before, we look to make sure that whatever, wherever we end up with the district's mission, whether it be new and or revised, uh, vision, the core beliefs, and then the goals, to make sure there is that coherence, that they could all flow together and represent what the Fairview school community would like to see for your district moving forward. A final product looks something like this. Um, some call this uh, strategic plan out of age, but basically this is another district uh, from McHenry County that we did last spring. And as you can see there, they've got their mission statement, their vision statement, the core values and goals. This is a district that had none of these pieces in place. So all of this was created relatively new we also, um, you know, we should be fortunate to work with you. We do have a graphic artist that then creates a, a sheet like this, a, um, a final prototype, if you will, for your district. I see that um, the branding has been pretty exceptional here in 72. Uh, you've got some really, really nice things that can be incorporated in a, as a part of this uh, because we believe that not only the appearance of the final product, but more importantly, even the content of that final product is, is what's most important. And then finally, upon that, uh, we ask the board to come back then and approve it. We do all of this work, like I said, we get input from the community and the staff. Uh, we have our stakeholder committee working here, but ultimately, this is the work of the board to ultimately approve. So we don't want to bypass the board's responsibility to say that this is what was developed but the board ultimately has the opportunity to approve this and hopefully, if done well and correctly, the board would be more than glad to approve whatever develops as a part of the process. So our firm uh, is committed to excellence and as such, we will continue to work with you until you are satisfied with the end result of, of what we do. So that's something that, you know, to this I would say in the last year we've done over a dozen strategic plans for districts. At this point we have not heard back from a single one of them. All of them are just moving forward. Fairly recently we worked with Lincolnwood District, we worked with Niles District, we worked with East Main District. So we're working with a lot of local districts. Um, part of that is people feel to an extent, um, not to pat myself on the back, but my experience in Niles Township is, is helpful in that. I kind of know our communities from my experience here as a superintendent. And once you're in this area, you just, you love this area. And sometimes that shows in the work that we do. So um, nonetheless, we have this commitment for everyone, but I would tell you, we'd give you even special kit gloves with, um, you know, having the opportunity to work with Fairview should we have that good fortune. Again, these are some of the other districts that we've worked with regarding some of these other plans. And as such, um, uh, that's pretty much all I have as part of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions that I can answer? I know I'm looking over here, but I know we're at the board meeting, so primarily for the board. Is there, are there any questions that I may be able to answer to you? I have a question. Sorry, Dee. Go ahead. Um, so I, looking at the CST, and you have those 30 to 40 stakeholders. Do you ever come into it uh, where you see more community members wanting to engage? And then at what point do we s reach out to the community and say, this is the, the amount of people we want, we don't want too many voices, sure. but we have enough voices? Yes, great question. For the most part, we have found that there's a magic number. We try to keep it to 50 or less, okay? Um, and that also depends on the size of the district. You know, having recently worked with East Main District, they've got several thousand students as part of that district. We opened it up a little bit more, but by opening up a little bit more, I think we had 48 uh, as a part of that group. Um, the least number that we had worked with a district that was similar in size to Fairview, and that was, um, we had 30, was the smallest number. But we don't want to be exclusive, we'd like to be as mm -hmm. inclusive as possible, but again, there becomes a point that um, the larger the group, the more unmanageable mm -hmm. it, it can become. The other piece is we like, we won't call it exhaustive, 
exact representation, but we want to make sure staff-wise, parent-wise, community-wise, that we've got a good balance mm -hmm. there. Because too much of any one group is can be an imbalance. It's better off than that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Um, an opportunity that we have here is um, community engagement, in, if you will, in certain areas, but like getting them to maybe reply to surveys or um, English is not their first language and things like that. How do you deal with that kind of a population? Yeah, the challenge there is we simply will work with the district. Our primary format of surveys and surveys is about once a month, okay? I may have missed this, but how long how long is the process? That's exactly what I was gonna ask. We typically that is dependent upon how it works for your district. However, we recommend trying to truncate it in such a way to do it within a four to six week period if possible. That'd be three to four evening sessions. Okay. Only because if we separate out too much time between sessions, then you kinda have to start over because a good teaching model is the, the sooner you can revisit it again. I've had districts do it every week for three to four weeks and be done. Um, every other week works pretty good. Um, again, we're primarily looking at three to four sessions overall. So the four sessions are over a six week period and then, and then how much time before a draft of the strategic plan? Well, it's gotta be a draft as, as, as well. we go along. So it's being created by that last session, we have an overall draft which we share with the core stakeholder team and basically look to them and say, here's where we are. Is everyone comfortable with where we landed with our mission, with our vision, with our core values, and with the goals that we've set forth for the district moving forward? And um, at that point, it may need some additional what we call wordsmithing and fine tuning, if you will. And for that, we typically work with the administration and or those who, there are people that sometimes are just gifted in wordsmithing, there are those that just know how to rework words, and we consider ourselves very good at that, but we also want it to be language that you're comfortable with and is consistent with language that you would use here. When, when would, the, would you be starting? I mean, is this process even to assemble all the stakeholders as well, so when? Well, we like to recognize So later this evening, one of the action items is for the board to um, formally approve the proposal, if you support the proposal. The cost would be 
$13,900 um, with the opportunity to you know, add to that if we saw the need to with further support down the road. Um, but you know, I feel that it's really the right time for our district. Um, I think that you know, having a familiarity with the township, um, I spoke at length with David Russo, my colleague in District 74, who we all know, um, you know, and he couldn't speak more highly of the process, and I know that he would let me know, um, you know, his real read on it. Um, so, and talking with a couple of other superintendents that were listed, you know, I feel like we're in very good hands with the process, and, you know, between the opportunity to complete the survey for parents who may not be able to commit the time or board members, there's, there's an opportunity for everyone to engage in the process in some way, as little or as much as they want. So, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit later in the meeting. We're going to let Dr. Zabilka head off to another meeting. Um, any other questions before he leaves? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the leadership, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present. And good luck to make the decision. And I, you know, hope our students look forward to working together. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next report, um, over the course of several months, uh, Cassio De Silva, Jeff Fair, and George DeMarcus have been working together. Um, George being from Archon, our architect who helped us with this beautiful facility that we just love um, so much, um, have been working to develop a longer range facility plan. Um, and so George is here this evening to talk to the board, um, you know, about, you know, sort of his thoughts and, and what the plan is starting to shape up to look like um, going forward. So welcome back, George. I'm glad we're not talking construction. <laughs> there better not be any construction in this plan. Thanks. We actually learned a little more about Apple products. Barry helped me to know how to get on this presentation. So I don't know if you have this in front of you as well, do we? Or do we... I look at a back of heads tonight? Is... Um, no, okay. I, yeah. we do not. Surprise, um, surprise. So therefore, it is a full surprise tonight. Um, so don't worry, it's only five slides, and I talk a lot for five slides, so don't you worry about that. But um, thanks for having me again tonight. It's good to see everybody. Uh, and, and really, our, our goal tonight is to walk you through uh, what we've been doing over the last few months and what, what our challenge has been and what the ultimate goal is going to be. Um, our focus has been helping craft together a long-range facility plan. And if you remember years ago, gosh, it's weird saying years ago, but years ago when we were brought on board, our big picture plan was looking kind of at the, at the master planning level. And I know a lot of people throw terms out left and right of facility plan and master plan, and I usually like to break them down into two different categories. When we talk master planning, our focus on the design side is to look at how your facility operates at a curricular level to meet the needs that you're trying to achieve as a district. So that was looking at the programs that you're trying to do here, the types of opportunities you're trying to create here, and then see as we analyze those and find out those issues, how we can build uh, additions and renovations to help meet those needs. So. The outcome of that was kind of what we see here today. It was looking at the circulation of the district, or of, the, of, of Fairview, understanding the programs like pre-K coming into the building, and, and looking at what kind of spaces, the library being centrally located and get access to everyone. And what that did is it helped us kind of create a plan that built these two major additions that kind of solved those pieces of the puzzle. That's only one side of the story. That's the master planning side. The facility assessment side, or that long-range facility plan, is really focused on the nuts and bolts of your building. It's kind of looking at all the maintenance needs of the building to keep it going on for years to come. A lot of people, in, 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 in historically, would focus on one side or the other. And if you focus on all the, the great, pretty stuff, the building kind of falls apart behind it, and then you next thing you know, you have such big pills to swallow, big things to do. Some people focus so much on the maintenance side that they don't do the, the additions and the curricular size. So putting those two pieces together is a good comprehensive approach that makes the most success and it gets us, it sets of us the best step forward to kind of see what's out there or what you need to do. So what we've been doing now the last few months is looking at your facilities from a maintenance perspective, right? So the challenge that we took on was one, to analyze all your building components survey all your buildings from plumbing, electrical, mechanical, architectural, and primarily focused on the existing building. We know and hope that everything on this side of it that we just finished is, is good for many years to come, but it's looking for the pieces of the puzzle that, were, that have been living here for quite some time. 
And then not forgetting to incorporate any little, maybe, uh, curricular pieces that we want to not forget about as well from a classroom perspective or from an opportunity perspective. It's usually a small portion of that. Uh, but really, the, the primary focus is goal one of analyzing the building from that lens. So how does that look? So I usually break it down into five steps. And it's, I call it discovery, analysis, documentation, budgeting, and projection. The discovery piece is the parts that we kind of uh, are get our hands dirty. And that's where us and our engineers that we did this over spring was walk the building, pop our heads above ceilings, look at all your mechanical equipment, analyze your roofs, the conditions of all those roofs. We looked at all your electrical systems. We looked at all your plumbing fixtures, your plumbing that runs through the building to the drinking fountains, to all the toilets. Uh, we looked at all your finishes in your building, be it your flooring, your ceilings, your lights, your doors into all your classrooms. Uh, we even looked on the perimeter, looked at all your parking lots, looked at all your walls, looked at your windows, and really all those were from the lens of, are there any maintenance needs that we need to stay on and, and kind of quantify and qualify to put on this docket that make sure that we put it on our, our long range plan going forward so we don't forget about it. So that's what we did. Uh, I didn't do it all. I had all the experts that I surround myself with, so our MEP engineers looked at the things that they needed to look at. Our building envelope uh, guru, Brian, he went up on the roofs with his team and looked at all your roof conditions and, and kind of cataloged the age of your roofs. He cataloged the expected life cycle of those roofs, the, the, the composition of those roofs. Um, we had another member look at all your, your vertical surfaces, your building envelope, all your walls and windows, and analyze how those are, 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 are doing. Uh, and we compiled all that information. So if you look at the discovery phase, that is kind of the red part of the category. That is us kind of the, at the infancy of the stages that we kind of did in spring. As we kind of exited spring and got into uh, the summer, what we did is we cataloged all those pieces, we quantified all those pieces, and we want to uh, break them down into key categories that we have kind of listed today. Site, building envelope, so it is the horizontal and vertical surfaces of the building that keep the water out. Uh, architectural, all your interior finishes. Accessibility, looking at all any trip hazards, any conditions that we could cause that we would want to alert you of to get remedied. Structural. Mechanical, pretty self-explanatory, looking at all your rooftop equipment, all your mechanical equipment, unit vents and classrooms, ages of those equipment, uh, plumbing, like I mentioned, and electrical. So we found what we found, and a lot of those items are based on our site observations, but that only gives us half to three quarters of the story. The other half is actually meeting with staff, meeting with Casio, and understanding what items might be giving you problems. Right? So just because you have a brand new unit living somewhere in your building that's a mechanical piece that you just bought four years ago doesn't mean that that's going to do, be doing great. That might be giving you the most problems because maybe that has a leak or maybe that it's, has some components that are failing. Uh, so we, our eyes are only see half that story. Conversing with staff and kind of understanding what tickets have been going on give us the other half of that story. So we sat down and documented the pieces that we found, marry that with the pieces that were kind of causing problems, and we put all those together in one comprehensive list. Um, once we get all that, we document everything, and we quantify everything, and then the fun part starts, which is budgeting everything, right? Um, and, and when that happens, and I know we've been doing this for quite some time, we've been doing schools for over 40 years, I haven't been doing it for over 40 years. I've been doing almost 20 years, uh, but our, our firm specializes in that. The gray hairs tell you otherwise. I know everyone's looking and smiling, but uh, I'm not there yet. That's why it's a nice dimly lit room. But, um, but really, we've been doing this for quite some time, and, and what we do in the budgeting side is we, we talk to um, contractors in the field to understand what costs of things are going on now. We, we look at experiences of things that what they're bidding at, components that have been going on that we've been uh, seeing bids come in to understand what the construction costs in t are today. Uh, once we document those and we quantify and budget, and we, we are in that stage where we re-reviewed those numbers with the district, with the administration to say, here's what we found, here's how much it costs today. Uh, the last piece of that puzzle is then taking those items that we, we identified today and then projecting out over the next 10 years of the types of things that you might need to do or be on, on top of to keep the building going. Uh, I have one district that project, had us project out 20 years, 
it's a little crystal ball-y the further out you go, right? Uh, 10 years is kind of that sweet spot that we look at that it, it, we have enough to uh, understand where things are going. You put enough escalation in there to understand what it can cost. But like anything, this is something that we revisit every year with you. So once this is complete and you have it, we call it a living, breathing document. Every year we circle back on and say, all right, what types of projects do we need to take off of this? There might be some things that are identified that are doing great that we can push out down the road. There might be some items that are further down the list that we might have to pull forward because they're causing us issues. So this facility plan is really a tool for you to kind of keep everything uh, on front and center and, and available for you to understand. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that whatever we're going to show you at the end of this means that you have to do it every summer. I say that now because I want you to all understand that. It doesn't mean that we're going to commit you and say, for the next 10 years, you have to spend this much type of money. What it does is it helps you clearly identify all your components of your building, understand the potential costs of each component of your building, and helps you keep an eye on those pieces. So if that date comes, you might have to do it. There are certain components that if, if, you, if we were looking at your buildings, they're all in, the building's in really great shape. The key big numbers that you'll ever see that will come out of this are, are three main pieces. Your mechanical equipment, your roofs, and your electrical service pieces are the main pieces, right? Currently, all of those are operating. The, when we document those, we could only be as good as saying their expected life cycle is X. So for a roof, it's usually 20 to 25 years. For mechanical systems, it's 30 years or 15 years, depending on the component. There's many components and many schools that have their pieces going way beyond those 15 years and way beyond those 25 years. As long as there's proper maintenance on them, they can keep going. What usually happens is when you can't get the parts on eBay anymore is when you want to replace them. That's usually the big piece, right? But having them on there is must, something for us just to understand that we want to keep eyes on. Uh, roofs. When we look at roofs, they'll say, you'll probably see on this list that there's a handful of roofs that might want to get taken care of over the next five or six years. It doesn't mean you have to. All it means is we, as we approach those times of their life cycle, we come back, we look at them. There might be some small maintenance pieces that can breathe continued life into those components. There might be things that, are, that you do need to do that are bigger. But all it's doing is it's, if we don't put it on the, on the paper, it's forgotten. If it's forgotten, it becomes a surprise. If it becomes a surprise, I get the bad call, right? So I want to make sure that it's all on there so you guys can make educated decisions going forward for the types of maintenance needs that you might need to do. We are in the BOE presentation piece of this, which is the yellow component. Uh, as we exit this, uh, we're, not at the, we're, we're kind of doing the finishing touches. Our goal is to revisit the plan with all the budgets and our projections uh, with administration, and then uh, hopefully circle back with you in the next month or two with kind of the final layout and the final plan. Um, and you guys will be able to see kind of what that looks like. The types of things that we did uncover, and, 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 and none of these are, are in, in terrible condition. They're just items that are on that list. As we looked at the site, uh, it's looking at your, your parking lots and make sure that we are crack fill and seal coating or replacing things that might need to get replaced. On the architectural side, uh, the primary ones was casework for classrooms, uh, finishes in, in spaces that you might need it, uh, tiles that might be cracked, VCT, uh, making sure that we have the, your, your standing of your gym floor on a, a proper routine maintenance, that we know when to do those. Uh, doors and frames that might need repainting or some replacement. Hardware on some doors that might need replacement. It's, I mean, we're looking for the littlest things. These are the, the things that we're identifying that are the smallest things are the right things to have. If I was in here saying, we have big problems of things, those are the wrong things to have. These is us really trying to find stuff. That's good, right? Uh, on the building envelope, we've identified maintenance that we need to do from either um, sealant for control droids, tuck pointing on your walls, all the, all the routine maintenance that you're going to want to do and keep up like you would in a building like this that keeps water out of your building. The roofs, I kind of walked through quite a bit. Mechanical, we identified pretty much all your components, uh, which was nice because we have a nice listing now of age of every piece of your equipment and kind of condition of every piece of your equipment. Uh, BAS is kind of your building automation system. If we upgraded this side, making sure the other side as time goes on, as you start roping on new systems, and make sure they all speak the same language and they can all kind of interact together. Uh, plumbing and fire protection, that's looking at your piping throughout the building, check valves, boilers, uh, 
really all, all the guts that no one sees on the day-to-day, but Casio probably that would see it in the background. Uh, and then lastly, looking at your electrical systems. We, we did incorporate in here uh, the, the goal to go to LED light replacement. Uh, it is in there, so if we, if, as we project out down the road and we want to start rolling out new energy code and new lights, that's in there. We have a cost associated to it, but that's something that you can kind of do over time. Uh, but these, in general, is the categories and how they, how they are, are set up. Our final product works pretty easy. I always kind of, in college, I always learned that if I'm up for it, I could present and say what I'm, what, and explain myself pretty clearly. But if I'm never around, how do you guys follow through on that and understand what's, what the document says? So the document is actually structured. It, you get both an Excel format, so you could kind of manipulate it, which is the dangerous side. But the, the hard copy format of it uh, pretty much is broken out in all those categories. Each item is identified, the issues listed, the remedy is listed, the location of where it is is listed, and the dollar side. So it's easy to, to look down and say, all right, here's what the problem is, or here's what we're looking at, here's where it is, and then here's what you need to do. To belts and suspenders it, we also have the floor plans that are attached to the back that have the same identifiers for those are. So if you don't know where those rooms are, for like the new principal that's going to look where those are, uh, you could easily say, okay, item number S or A1 is here, here, and here, and it makes it even easier to find. So really, we try to make it as simple as possible for anyone to be able to open and peruse it and kind of make the decisions if you can't get me on the phone and look at something. But our goal is to be here for the long haul and every year revisit it. This is why I lock the Excel file so it can't be manipulated. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, which is why uh, we're, we, we're always around. And we always say this is a living, breathing document, and we're always happy to do so. Five slides, I spoke probably longer than I thought, and one of those slides is a thank you. But um, thank you, and that's kind of our progress update. Questions? For me? How much does it cost for me? Uh, we actually are, are doing this uh, for, for you guys for free. It was a cost for a service, but we looked through it, and, we, and it's something that we, as, as we've, we've worked with you so long, and we've done so many. We love the opportunity of continued support with, with Fairview that it is something that we are uh, looking to provide at no cost. These hands, they're not made for physical labor, so don't you worry about that. I'll tell you that. These hands, I, I hold a pencil and I work at a computer. Uh, we do not do any building, so uh, we have zero contract when it comes to any construction. Our, our, what we do is once, once, if you were to say to do something, we could help you design it, and then that gets publicly bid for somebody else to bid, build it. I stay far away from that side, but uh, if you... Some of these items, a lot of these items, are general maintenance items that you could probably just have Casio or in-house staff get proposals to do without needing me. But we are always happy to help and always easy to are happy to offer our services for anything you guys would need and, if you haven't to, learned. I was just going to say to further answer what you I think what the question was. Casio has worked with a long-range facility plan previously as well as Jeff, and what it does is it just lays out sort of a plan for us going forward many years so that we can think about what are the most important things, but then it's all in our hands. We decide, the board decides which projects you want to do, you know, maybe it's the replacement of a boiler. We would come to the table, say this is what we want to do, we want to put it out for bid, and then we would hire a contractor to do that work. So um, the architects really help us wrap our minds around how, uh, what we need, um, and it really made sense after the, the significant facility project we just undertook to do it at this point in time. So. Yes, yeah, real, real quick to add on to that. So the last one we did was 10 years ago with our previous architect. Back in 2014, we put a facility plan out, which was what we based all of our work on after that. So at the time, Cassio and I went through it with the architect, and a lot of what we did over that 10-year period, like Dr. Whitaker was saying, was out of the cash that we had on hand and our fund balance. So like the roofing projects that we did, uh, you know, we didn't borrow any money for those particular projects. We did everything out of our fund balance. But that's how we approach it. It's a case-by-case -case basis. If we have to go out to bid, we've been up for bid for projects, but a lot of the funding for those projects came out of the funds that we had on hand. Are we, do we amortize it over time? No, we don't. No, we don't. We take it in one fiscal year. So we'll, we'll look at the plan before the year. 
we'll say, okay, where do we have in the capital projects for that year? We'll get an estimate for that particular project. So, like we did three summers, Casio, of roofing projects. Yes. And for each one of those summers, we budgeted the amount, bef the exact amount before the year. I, I will tell you what's interesting is working in schools all of my life. What, uh, schools get added on to over time. If you were to build one brand new school all at one time, all those roofs are the same vintage and usually come at one time. Here, if you were to look at your roofs, I forget how many, there's like 18 roof areas yeah. at, at minimum that we have, and they're all different ages, which means that they're all going to kind of come at different times. So what's nice about having a long-range facility plan is we've identified them in given years to keep them on your radar for when those are coming, and they're not all hitting you at once. Usually the all hitting you at once is the trouble, but these are one of those things that, and, and it's nice that you have these additions because they allow that opportunity to happen and that planning to happen. Thank you. Thank you, George, and, and thank you. Um, I, I'm glad that you asked the question about the price, um, you know, because I wasn't sure if George was going to bring it up. But um, you know, this process is not inexpensive. Um, a facility plan is a significant cost to a district, um, and because of our relationship with Archon, you know, they wanted to do this for us, um, you know, which I am very appreciative of. Um, you know, we feel like we're in such good hands with Archon, and after this facility project, it was the perfect time um, to not only double check the work that was just finished, um, but to take a look at all the other parts of the building so that we can plan going forward. Um, so I think, you know, for the next 10 years or whatever it ends up being, um, you can feel very comfortable as a board that there's a plan in place and there's not anything that's going to, you know, there are always surprises, there are always going to be an emergency, but, you know, you're not going to have multiple expenses piling up in one or two given years. So thank you for your generosity on that, and it's been great working with you. Um, we're so pleased with the facility. The kids, I think the kids are happy, um, enjoying the spaces. You've got to come by sometime when they're in school so you can kind of see it in action. But, um, you know, study. Archon did a very good job for us. I finally saw the graphics on the wall. I love the graphics that are going on. The up. graphics so on they look looks, really nice. looks great, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yep. And thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. So later this evening, um, you know, again, we will have a conversation about, you know, moving forward with approving this facility plan. George will have the final plan to us in the next month or so, and then we'll go from there. So, okay, the next um, item on the agenda, I know you're all waiting with bated breath, is the board policy, first reading. So hopefully uh, board members have had an opportunity to take a look at the policies. Um, and read them over. I also provided a summary of the revisions and, and really just tried to hit the highlights. Um, there are 38 policies included in this uh, section of policy review. Seven of the policies are more significant updates, which is why I pulled them out um, to illustrate for you more clearly. Um, but I would just entertain any questions board members have. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity, maybe take some time between now and next month to take a look. Um, and then next month we would approve these revisions to the policy. So any questions that I can answer for board members? No? Nope? Okay. Great. Um, and finally, the superintendent's report for August. Uh, a couple of highlights. Uh, the Fairview's newsletter should be hitting, uh, the fall edition of the Fairview should be hitting mailboxes this weekend um, or early next week. So that's always something to look forward to. Um, we have been working closely with the PTA to build the calendar of events for this year. Um, so we have a lot of fun things planned. Um, so we've been working on that and those dates will be published um, shortly. Um, summer curriculum projects. Uh, next month, we're going to treat you to um, sort of a show and tell of some of the summer curriculum projects that went on this summer. Our teachers do a tremendous job of thinking about their craft over the summer and working to be creative and improving upon what it is that they do. So I'm happy to be able to share that with you um, at an upcoming board meeting. Um, uh, Laramie Avenue. Um, what, so frustrating. Um, last summer I met with the village of Skokie to talk about our school calendar and the fact that construction on the road is, you know, going to be difficult for everybody. Um, and here we are. So um, Skokie does, yeah, Skokie does an amazing job of road repairs and um, improvements, but the one quarter mile with two schools and 
here we are. So anyway, we'll get through it. There's, there's no choice other than to get through it, but um, we're hoping um, the uh, week following Labor Day will be the final uh, coat of the asphalt out there, so it will be finished and striped and all of that. So a couple more weeks of this. Um, my poor car is so dirty. <laughs> it needs a wash, but I'm refusing to do it. Um, finally, we did hire a new maintenance team member, Raul Paredes, joined Casio's team, um, bringing the team up to Casio and three full-time daytime maintenance employees. Um, the building is much bigger, um, the needs are different, so um, we are happy to bring Raul on board. Um, so you will see him uh, out and about, say hello. He's a very nice young man. And finally, um, you know, just all of the things related to the opening of school, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, the track has been fixed just in time for our 5K. Um, there was a sinkhole over the summer, for those of you that didn't know, and kind of blew up right next to our beautiful new track and did some damage, but it's, it's been repaired. Uh, we're back, you know, it was like the track finally received its lines and its final surface and then there's damage. So anyway, you can never predict what will happen, but uh, it's been a great opening, a great start to the school year. I'm very grateful to my team and everybody um, around here that works so hard to make it happen. So questions, anything that I can answer for you? No? Okay. Thank you. Um, up next, we are going to um, go to board committees and representatives. Uh, finance, personal committee, Sargon, do you have any updates? I met with uh, Cindy and Jeff, and uh, he went through he went through all, all of the content. And uh, I'd say um, I, I don't have any questions, but I'm sure Jeff's gonna go through it. Yeah, late, a little bit later in the meeting, Jeff will go through his tentative budget presentation. Mm -hmm. And we spent the majority of our meeting time talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, Edred Committee, Raphael, any updates? I don't have any new updates, uh, only that on October 18th, 2024 now will be the uh, annual kickoff luncheon. Uh, if you don't want to attend that, I'll be signing up for that and attending it. And then NTDSC, uh, Jackie, any updates? No updates. We have a board, uh, NTDSC board meeting tomorrow, so that's the next meeting. Okay. And then Christine, anything with the PTA? No. Our first official meeting is next month. So. Thank you. Sorry. That was really <laughs> quick. <laughs> Um, next item is Freedom of Information regarding Freedom of Information Act request. I can report that there was one Freedom of Information Act received since the last board meeting and that it was responded to as required. Um, information items and correspondence. We have one submission for the information item and correspondence this month. Jackie, can you please give us a summary? We received a thank you note from the Niles Township Community Clothing Closet for a continuous donation to the closet. We also received a thank you note from retired teacher Bernadette Gonzalez thanking Dr. Whitaker and the board for making her retirement celebrations memorable. The donation to the clothing closet, we have so many lost and found items that don't get claimed. Um, so we donate them back to the Skokie clothing closet that does benefit students in our own building as well as students in other schools. So it, it goes to good use. I know as a parent it's frustrating when they lose things, but um, you know we do recycle it to people who need it. So. All right, it's public comment. At this time, I'd like to invite members of the audience to address the board in public comment. The public comment period is designed to gain input from the public and not for immediate response by the board to the question or comment presented. If you wish to address the board, please come to the microphone and state your name. A three-minute time limit will be set. The board secretary will keep time. I can confirm that there were no online comments as well. All right, we are going to move to our action items. First one up is okay. All right. Um, may have a motion and a second to adopt the tentative fiscal year 2025 district budget. Adopt a resolution placing the tentative budget on public display and set the date for a public hearing on the budget. So moved. I'll second. Okay, and then Mr. Fayer, would you like to discuss? Would love to. Thank you again <laughs> to the board. Uh, tonight's the, that time of year. 
the tentative budget for 2025. This is the first reading. The final budget will be approved in September's board meeting. Uh, that will be put on, this will be put on display in the district office, so we'll have the official ISB budget document along with my budget summary that was given to the Finance Committee this week. We're going to take a look first at just the operating fund summary for the year. The operating fund consists of the education, O&M, and transportation fund, the three funds from which we have the most expenses and the most revenues incurred. Uh, we're looking at a negative 3.5% decrease in revenues, uh, which is, I guess, redundant when you have negative and decrease. Uh, my, you have a 5% increase from CPI this year. Again, a large part of it, our revenue, 76% of it, comes from our local property taxes. We're seeing a 5% increase due to CPI this year. There's a negative $230,000 uh, for federal ESSER, uh, ESSER percentage, ESSER money. ESSER 3 is off the books now. We've got $40,000 that'll be coming through this year, but the large chunk of it, $230,000, well, was last year, and that's coming off our revenues now. Um, oddly enough, after we met as a finance committee this week, we got the final numbers for our CPPRT. CPPRT is a corporate personal property replacement tax that's incurred on businesses in the area. There's a long description of the rationale for why it's decreased so much that I will include in the final budget packet that goes out to the community but it went from 2.8 million two years ago to 1.8 million last year to 1.2 this year. When I talked to the Finance Committee the other day, I was hopeful that it'd be right around 1.7. Unfortunately, it went down to 1.2. Traditionally, it's been a large portion of our budget year in, year out. Going back 10 years, it's been right around anywhere from 700,000 down up to that $2.8 million number. Um, in talking to some other districts and, the st and the, what, what happened with the state, the Department of Revenue is the one that ex exercises this tax, that there may have been some timing error that was why we got 2.8 million, something with the, um, it also could have been something with COVID, with the way businesses were going, and a little lag in the taxes there. So I'll include an explanation for the public uh, with that, but that's a huge decrease from our budget from last year. We're also waiting on preschool funding. Right now we budgeted st strictly tuition for preschool, we did apply for the Preschool for All grant, uh, and we estimated the program costing about $400,000, so we're hopeful that that money may come in. We're looking at a 7.2% increase in expenditures for the year. 5.7% uh, of that, the increase is total dollars towards salaries, so not 5.7% increase on salaries, it's a 5.7%, so that's meaning positions added, any dollars towards salaries. There's a 5.6 increase in total dollars towards benefits, so that's any kind of insurance benefits. It's important to note that salaries, insurance benefits, and also out-of-district tuition for special education accounts are about 90% of our expenses year in, year out. Again, the preschool program, adding that program is right around $400,000. Uh, we are seeing a 15% increase in that uh, NTDSC out-of-district tuition. That's a significant number, going from about 1.25 to 1. Uh, 1.45, 1.5 for the year. That's not finalized until we get to the spring because there could be move-ins, there could be move-outs, and we, that goes, uh, we true that up during the year. We're also seeing an 18% increase in the first year of our new custodial contract that was approved in the spring, largely to the expansion of the building and the expansion of the square footage. We have $589,000 coming out of our operating funds for transfers. Uh, 389,000 of that is one that we know about. That is something, the debt certificates that we borrowed for the construction project, we have to pay that out of our operating funds year in, year out. 200,000 of that is another transfer from o to Capital Projects. There's also one I have on the books for working cash, going back to the Capital Projects Fund for the construction. Because the construction bills have not closed out yet, we're attempting to be pretty conservative in those estimates. We may, as I mentioned, the Finance Committee, have to do an amended budget during the year as we get those final numbers for construction. And we're looking at about negative 1.4 million in our operating funds as of right now. Um, you know, something we've had negative uh, projections before out of our budget. Uh, this uh, is a little bit of an anomaly and we kind of knew that at some point it was gonna get uncomfortable given the fact we committed so much of the dollars on hand that we had for the construction project. Again, 26 to 27 million dollars in construction, 11 to 12 million of that is coming from our funds on hand. Uh, at the time when we made that decision, we knew that we wanted to be fiscally responsible with the large fund balances we had, but we also knew at some point when construction was over, there would have to be decisions going forward about re maybe 
getting back up to the fund balance of where it was, or maybe getting back to that 75% number that the board has stated as a goal, and finding creative ways to do that. There's a number of other factors influencing the budget for this year. Again, interest earnings. We earn interest on any funds that we have in our fund balances, uh, and our treasurer's office does the investments for us. Uh, student fees, it's a, it's a relatively small number compared to other school districts, but we do uh, add that as a line item in our books. Uh, state funding, the problem with state funding is that even as we're being fiscally responsible with our local dollars, we're not seeing any increase in state dollars. We're seeing the same number year in, year out, right around 540,000. We do get another number for state transportation, which is about 180 to 200,000 more, but that's a very limited number for the state budget compared to other districts. The rationale for that is that we have a large tax base, we have a large um, equalized assessed valuation of property in the district, we, get a, we have a lot of large commercial tax base, but at the same time, we're, that not increasing year in, year, in, year out really affects us. Again, the close out of the building and construction projects and our debt payments, uh, the facilities and assessment plan that George has talked about uh, with the group, uh, the boiler replacement is the project that we're targeting for this summer. We're currently uh, trying to get projections for that, and we're talking again with George and the engineers and trying to get a sense of what that quote's gonna be. Uh, we're pending a curriculum adoption in the reading. We're going through the second year of that cycle. Likely that expense is gonna come on in FY26. Uh, we have the renewal of the student Chromebooks, uh, our current vendor contracts on hand, and again, our in-house transportation and food service programs. These are huge line items on our budget, but we think we do a, a good service to the community and to our kids by having those programs in-house and under our control regardless of whether or not uh, the cost, we believe the cost is one in which is, is worth having that kind of control in-house. And there's a very different look at our operating funds history over time. Uh, you know, we're so used to having that green bar well above the revenues and expenditures, but we're right about 63% at the end of this fiscal year. We're projecting to be right around 52% at the end of this year. Uh, again, 52, 60% is relatively normal for school districts, not normal for us. So it's, it's, again, a little uncomfortable to be at that number, but again, it's just a sign that we're trying to put the dollars that we take in right back into the school. And that investing so much money in this you know, beautiful building that's really turned out nice and putting $12 million of that project from the funds that we had on hand and still having about 60% in our fund balance is a good sign. Uh, the next steps that we have, in the next 30 days, we'll have that tended budget on display. And then before the budget hearing, we'll track those, uh, we'll update the revenues and expenditures as we get another month's worth of data, and I try and get the final audit numbers. Uh, September board meeting will have the final budget hearing. October board meeting will be the audit report, and hopefully that will be in actually, actually in October this year. So last year we had a delay in our audit because we had a lot of federal money coming in. Um, November board meeting will be our projections, our five-year financial projections, along with our tentative levy. Given that our tentative levy is the largest source of income that we have, it's important to do the projections right along with that. Uh, the December board meeting will be the final levy approval, and then we start budgeting for the fiscal year 26, which is a weird number to say, uh, January 1st. And with that, I will leave it to the floor for questions. Anybody? Good. Question? 1.4 in our operating funds, correct. Is it going to what? Affect our daily operations? Well, no, I mean, we're, no, because we committed that money. It's just going to be going forward if it's, it's decisions that we want to make for the future, really. And when we talk about the budget, it's like really about, uh, when we look at that five-year projection especially, it's about creating some semblance of long-term sustainability. Year in, year out, like right now, based on this budget, being at 52% at the end of the year in our operating funds is fine. It's going forward. What are the next decisions that we have to make after that? to maybe get back up to that 75% fund balance, work our way back, what, do we have, what decisions do we have to make after this year is really the thing that we have to talk about. Sure. Okay. And thank you to the Finance Committee. I know it was a long meeting the other day going through all this, so thank you. Okay. All right, would the Board Secretary please call roll call vote? Sargon Guliana? Yes. Rafael Cabor? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Okay, perfect. Next item. I um, may have a motion and a second to improve employment of certified teacher Lindsay Haza. 
So moved. I'll second. Anyone have questions regarding her employment? Okay. Will the board secretary please call roll call vote? Yes, one second. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Stoika? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Sargon yes. Guliana? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde, yes. Raphael Kavor? Yes. Next item was to approve the master district facility plan. We're going to take it out until we actually see the master facility plan. So more to come on that. Um, next item up, may I have a motion and a second to approve strategic planning with educational leadership solutions. So moved. I'll no second. Does anybody have any questions about that presentation? No, I think he laid it out. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. All right, board secretary, please call roll call vote. Yes, Jacqueline Bougde, yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the release of closed session minutes for February 21st, 2024, April 17th, 2024, and May 15th, 2024. So moved. I'll second. Okay, the board secretary, please call roll call vote. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde? Yes. Perfect. Um, final item is items for future consideration. Anybody have anything they'd like to add? No? Um, I would like to share that we have moved the September meeting to September 24th. Same time, same place, day earlier, <laughs> or a week later. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then may I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting of the Fairview Board of Education. It is 8.13 p.m. So moved. I'll second. Board Secretary, can you please call roll call vote? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Jacqueline B. Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody.